And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, everybody say time. What I'm preaching about tonight did not happen on just a single day. It was something that unfolded over a series of weeks and months and perhaps even years. But it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first things of the flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. This is the first mention in the scripture that talks about the fat that was offered to the Lord. Perhaps maybe a little tongue-in-cheek after what I preached this morning. (laughs) But tonight I'm going to preach the fat is where it's at. (laughs) Turn to your neighbor and say the fat's where it's at. I gave that title to the sound booth and they said, oh, I got to see how you do this. (laughs) Take a seat and I'll show you how it's done. The Bible talks a lot about faith. Can you say amen? We're all given a measure of it. And we're told to develop it. And we're instructed about the need of having great faith. And there are levels of faith. But one thing I can tell you is that if you're going to have great faith, you're going to have to have a relationship with God. I often marvel at how many people I encounter, even in the church, that seem to have a struggle with having faith. I'm not talking about having faith in the existence of God. I'm talking about having a faith in God. If you are struggling tonight in having faith in God's faithfulness or his love for you, etc., I would purport to you that it is because you have not been intimate enough with him yet to really understand God's nature and his thoughts. He said, my thoughts for you are good and that you would have a good end. We come to the New Testament, to the Hebrews 11 chapter that we call the faith chapter, and we note There are dozens of names that are listed. Great faith, this one did this by faith, that by faith. But all of them have a common denominator. And that is they all had a faith that was born in a closeness that had come from a relationship with God. It was a nearness that had come from hungering after God. The psalmist described it in Psalms 42. If you'll bring it up on screen. As the heart panteth after the water brooks. Uh, So panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, the living God. I want you to understand that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Uh, When you're so thirsty, if you could just get to some water, uh, that's the kind of thirst we need to have toward God. I just want to feel his touch. Uh, I just want to get into his presence. Uh, I just want to know him. This closeness comes from simply wanting to have God more than anything else. When you go into that Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, actually tells the story of what we just read in Genesis 4. It said, by faith, everybody say faith, Faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, that by it, being dead, he yet speaketh. Again, the issue of the law of first mention here is that when Abel offered this sacrifice unto the Lord, he offered the fat thereof. I'm going to show you in a few minutes that God was so pleased with the offering of that 
that later on under the law he incorporated as part of the law that God would require and instruct of the priest. Again, it was not just one offering. It was in the process of time. It's a consistency that causes true righteousness in the heart of an individual. It was what caused God to finally testify of his gifts and acknowledge that even though he's dead, his voice, his blood still speaks from the ground because week after week, month after month, more than likely year after year, Abel built altars unto the Lord. And he offered lambs. And again, if you were here this morning, we talked about the sheep aspect and how that you and I are likened unto the sheep, but it was not just the lambs, it was the fat thereof. The question is, why is that significant? What does the fat have to do with anything? <clears throat> well, again, when you bring up Leviticus 3 on the screen, forgive my voice, but Leviticus chapter 3, when the law gets to flowing, God starts giving instructions that flow from what Abel did. <clears throat> he said in verse 14, The priest shall offer therefore his offering. It's an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat, everybody say the fat, that covereth the inwards, and all the fat, everybody say the fat, that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver, and the kidneys, it shall, it shall he take away. The priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire, for a sweet savor. All the fat is the Lord's. It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations uh, throughout all your dwellings that you eat neither the fat nor the blood. We oftentimes are noting that we were told not to drink the blood, but we were also instructed not to eat the fat uh, that was part of the offering because it belonged uh, to the Lord. Abel had done this over and over, and he had offered animal after animal, but he also offered the fat thereof. And the bottom line is it was called the food of the offering. You see, what God was saying uh, is that what Abel started in Genesis 4, God said, I like it so much, I want to incorporate it uh, and codify it, uh, that the fat belongs to me. In other words, the fat is where it's at. <laughs> I want you to bring me the fat upon the altar. Uh, he said, the fat belongs to me. And anybody that knows anything about meat knows that the fat is the part of the meat that brings the savory taste. <laughs> A well-marbled steak. I, I, I will not spend much time right here. <laughs> Lest there be a possibility of derailing this entire message. I see Brother Walter salivating over there already. But when you lay that meat and those inwards onto the, onto the grill, I mean onto the <laughs> brazen altar, which was God's grill, it is the fat that brings that incredible aroma. It's the fat uh, that sizzles. It's the fat uh, that sparks the fire fast, uh, flames out quickly. It's like that sensation that happens sometimes when you wake up in the morning and the whole house is filled with the smell of bacon. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody thankful God put you in the New Testament instead of the Old Testament? <laughs> they weren't allowed to eat that in the Old Testament. God said, that belongs to me. <laughs> but God was so gracious to the New Testament church. He said, I'll share some bacon. <laughs> but it's the fat that causes the sweet aroma. He said, it'll be a perpetual statute. Uh, and you don't eat the blood, and you don't eat the fat because it belongs to God, there's a reason for it. That fat was a metaphor. 
It was a type of an offering unto God uh, that is the thing that is added to the mechanics of the offering. Uh, the meat was what was laid on as the mechanics, uh, but the fat is what brought uh, the pleasure to it. And you read the scripture in the book of Revelation that said the prayers of the saints go up as a sweet-smelling savor. All of that is type and metaphor uh, of the fat that was grilled to God throughout the Old Testament. Because that's what brought that aroma. It is symbolic of our proper hungering for God that is acceptable. It is the law of first mention. Because Abel would bring this over and over. And you ask yourself, why was he mentioned in Hebrews 11? There's a number of reasons. But one is that Abel is a type of a servant of God that was close to God. And loved God. And Cain was a type of a servant that was just going through the perfunctory mechanics and duty only of walking with God. Both offered excellent sacrifices. But one, it was said, offered a more excellent sacrifice. So far as the mechanics go, both of them had merit. But Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice that had come... Uh, by faith, it was a heart toward God that made it acceptable. Uh, and Cain showed his nature with his jealousy and his anger because God kept receiving his brother's offering and he wouldn't receive uh, his. Let me tell you why. You and I are not at liberty to bring God offerings uh, that our heart is not right. As a matter of fact, you can't really truly worship God with a heart full of drama. The heart full of issues with your brother or your sister. Bring up Matthew 5. Jesus said, Therefore, if you bring thy gift to the altar, there, if you remember that your brother has aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar. You don't get away with not leaving an offering. He said, Go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come back and offer thy gift. Don't stop the mechanics of faith. Uh, but if you really want it to matter, if you really want it to count, uh, you're going to have to elevate it beyond the mechanics of duty. Uh, and that I'm just doing this because uh, I have to do it. Uh, you got to get to the place where you're not just doing uh, the minimum because it has to be done. Uh, but I'm serving God uh, with joy and with love and with something that's in my heart uh, that when I offer this to him, uh, I'm adding the fat to it. Uh, I'm adding something that's going to smell uh, beautiful as an aroma and burn and flame. Abel, being yet dead, speaketh. And his testimony lives on today as an example of a servant who loved walking with God. The question is, where did it come from? I... Uh, I've thought about this and I can only conclude that as everything was back then, it was passed down from generation to generation. Imagine the conversation that Adam and Eve or that Abel would have with mom and dad. Recounting the times that they walked with God in the garden in the cool of the day. They had left the garden and been expelled long before Abel had come along. But yet they would tell him about that day, about how they had a daily fellowship with him. I would purport to you that I believe something was born in the heart of Abel that heard about an incredible experience uh, that his parents had had with a relationship with God. And somewhere along the lines decided, uh, if God can do that for them, then he can also do it for me. And he made a decision that I'm not going to live just off of my parents' testimony. I'm not going to live just off a of tradition that was passed down. I, I want this for myself. I, I want to know God. And so I'm not just going through the mechanics of it. I'm going to add to it. And the fat becomes a metaphor of the heart that was right before God. That says, God, I want to please you more than by anything. And that is the heart of faith. 
And that is the kind of fat that God is looking for in our worship. Uh, you and I can come in here week after week uh, and go through the mechanics. Plenty of people do that. Uh, but there is one thing to go through the mechanics. Uh, but it's another when I get my heart uh, in tune with my mechanics. Uh, and all of a sudden you know that brings uh, something from the Lord. Uh, our, God doesn't respond to our mechanics. Uh, but if you put some fat on that altar uh, and let some sweet smell and savor go up... Uh, it will draw his presence. <laughs> to compare this with Cain, who brought the fruit of the ground, the irony is, is it did not really require an altar. But as a result, there was no fat. There was no sweet-smelling savor. Oh, it had the mechanics of an offering. But there was no fat. There was no meat. There was no oil. There was nothing to create the aromatherapy that we would find that God asked for. And that's what happens when there's mechanics with no real personal exchange involved. Cain brought an offering that didn't require him to linger. It didn't require him to really seek after. I'll do the minimum that I perceive is needed. God honored the mechanics for a long time, but he looks at the heart. And after a process of time, he concluded that both of them are going through the mechanics, but only one has a heart that really is doing it because they love me. They come just like people do to church today. We come week in, week out, and we throw envelopes in the bag every once in a while. We ask God to bless us and prosper us. But sometimes we're not doing it because we have a real heart or a love for God. We're just going through the mechanics of it all. We want our prayer answers, but we don't want to spend time in His presence. We don't want to long for the closeness that comes uh, in him. No real intimacy. But I want you to understand when you go to Hebrews 11, we've already talked about Abel. Let's go back there for a minute. Verse 5, the next one, he said, And faith by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. He was found, not found, because God had translated him. Before he had the translation, though he had this testimony, he pleased God. Everybody say, please God. There was something about Enoch that hungered after God. There was something that he offered unto God that was similar to what Abel had offered up. Enoch's faith had pleased God. And pleased means to, to gratify entirely. Uh, he had a faith that was integrated into his daily life. Uh, and he walked with God. Enoch began his walk with God evidently after the birth of his first son Methuselah when he was about 65 years old. And all we know is from that time forth uh, he began a 300 year walk with God. And there comes a point when God can only fellowship us so far with our flesh. You see, flesh is a constant barrier between us and God. That's why it has to be controlled. And at some point, it even has to be removed. And that's when he calls us home. And I believe the Bible said that Enoch pleased God. He walked with God and just pleased God. Uh, there came a point when God had to look at Enoch and said, I am so pleased uh, with what's happening here. I'm so pleased with this relationship. Uh, I want to get closer to you, Enoch. Uh, I want to have an even closer relationship. Uh, at this point, I cannot do anything else uh, until we get the flesh out of the way. Uh, and he removed the flesh uh, and took him home. Verse 7 of Hebrews 11. Noah, being warned of God of the things as not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. This was a process that took dozens and dozens of years. You go back to Genesis 6 and read his story. Verse 8 said, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and made perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Over and over again you find, and God 
spoke to Noah, and Noah obeyed. You know what that tells me? That's a relationship. That's a day-to-day walk in communication. And people who are just going through the mechanics of church but do not really have a relationship with God, all they tend to know is the facts. But they do not understand what's going on behind the facts. That's why so many live in constant condemnation. Because you're aware of the facts of shortcoming, but you're totally not understanding the nature of a God that redeemed you to begin with. Psalms 103 and verse 7 said, He made known His ways unto Moses, but His acts unto the children of Israel. You see, there was a difference. All Israel knew was the facts and the acts, but Moses had an understanding of why God does what He does. And he said in verse 8, this is what Moses understood that they didn't. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He'll not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He, he will not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us uh, according to our iniquities. And as far as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them uh, that fear him. Uh, but when all you've ever seen uh, is the judgments come down. You don't understand that about God. So many struggle with God because everything's performance driven. We become nothing more than modern day Pharisees because we really don't know Him. We're busy bringing the mechanics of the offering, but we're not intimate with God. We don't have a relationship with Him. The final example I'm going to touch on is Hebrews chapter 11. And, and I, as far as that chapter, and it's Abraham. Listen to what James said about him in James 2. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Everybody say the altar. You see, works is the mechanics of worship. But faith is the relationship of worship. The act justified him because of the heart of his worship. They asked him, where are you going? He said, I and the lad are going to the top of the mountain to worship. And we will return unto you. He had no idea how that was going to happen. All he knew is he had a promised child in his presence. And he knew that God's will depended on this. And he knew God loved him. And he knew God had a relationship with him. And because of his confidence in God, he decided, I'm going to simply obey God. And God will figure out how to pull it off. Because I'll do this because I know him. I've had people say, how? you raise that knife above your boy it's because what God called sacrifice Abraham called worship and he said I know you God you will make a way sometimes those that are asked of things by God to make sacrifices cringe but those that know him know that he'll make a way. So James goes on in verse 22. Seest thou how faith wroth with his works? And by works was faith made perfect? You see, it wasn't the mechanics. The mechanics of sacrificing Isaac was the same as the mechanics that the heathens were using with their kids. The mechanics is the mechanics. What made it different was the relationship that he had with God. You see, when the Bible talks about that God talked to Noah, or, or in the days of Noah, he said the sin was great upon the earth and he was going to destroy the earth. And all. There, There's a whole several verses in a chapter that has God just talking. Did it ever occur to you that he was talking to Noah? That's why Noah understood what was going on. That's why Abraham understood. And so James said, do you see now how this works? Verse 23, the scripture was fulfilled that said, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. So watch this. And he was called 
the friend of God. To have the creator of the universe call a human being a friend is a pretty amazing thing. But it was because of that relationship that he spent his life. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.10, he looked for a city that had foundations whose builder and maker was God. I'm looking not for what men have built. I'm looking for what God has built. Everything in my life is oriented uh, towards seeking what God is doing uh, in this earth. Uh, and the things of this earth uh, is not what he craved. Uh, what he craved was God. Uh, Abraham was not some mystic living in a spiritually useless haze and fog. He was a successful man. Every day operating a very sizable operation. Thousands of cattle and heads of cattle and all that goes on with handling the ranching responsibilities and herding and finances. And he had enough servants to have a small militia. <laughs> he was like a walking corporation. <laughs> and yet despite the busyness of running all of his daily affairs and businesses and all of his enterprises, Somehow, he found time to be close with God. And so finally, verse 16, musicians, would you come? But now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. He was not looking for a city alone. He was looking for a city that was built by God. Because he knew if he could find the thing that was built by God, he would find the thing where God was. And it turned into the look and the search for a better country. A heavenly city. All of this is types and metaphors of our walk toward heaven and our walk toward that city there's a point in our walk with God that flesh has to be removed and God says I can't get any closer to you until I remove that barrier and bring you home and there's going to come a day when we're going to enter into that city and it's a city whose builder and maker is God it's a heavenly city. It's a heavenly place. But it is built for those who love his appearing. Those that have come to the altar and not just offered the mechanics, but are willing to offer the fat thereof. To offer the sweet smelling aroma. To thing that adds the pleasure to the mechanics. I haven't come tonight just to worship in a mechanical way. Before I leave this place, I want to worship in such a way that draws his presence and says, I like this. I like the smell of what this church is offering to me. Right. And as anybody knows, the smell of bacon will pull you out of bed in the morning. It'll pull you out of the shower in the morning. It'll pull you out of the backyard in the morning. The smell and the aroma will draw you and pull you. And, and that's what God is trying to say to the church uh, when he said the type and the metaphor that the fat uh, belongs to me. He said, I want it offered. I want you to draw me uh, with, your pre with your worship. Draw me with your heart. Draw me with your faith. Uh, offer me the fat because the fat uh, is where it's at. Uh, and if I can offer that kind of a sweet smelling savor, it'll draw God from whatever he's right. doing to say I want to visit Azalea Garden Road tonight he got something cooking down there tonight. stand with me across this house oh Jesus would you lift your voice under the Lord and just praise him
Come join me tonight and let's light the grill. The fire is lit. The grill is on. Every time we walk through the doors, the mechanics is here. The singers, the altar. The mechanics of church. Everything I give to you. Are you just gonna lay something dead and dry on the grill? Or are you gonna offer something that smells beautiful to him? Come into this altar and lift up your hands and begin to magnify him. And begin to praise him from within your heart. We get into trouble because we're offering too much dryness. We're offering too much mechanical. It's time to reach into the depth of the heart. Come on and lift your voice, sir. It's not enough just to come. I've got to give him an offering. I've got to lay something on the grill. That's from the heart. Come on, stir that Holy Ghost.
Come on, lay it on the grill. The fat is where it's at. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to come from the inwards. The fat was on the inward of the animal. God said, I want what comes from within. You can draw him with your praise. You can draw him with your worship. Jesus, I want to know you. Not just the mechanics. I want to know you.
That's it. Let intercession flow. There's something about moving into the Spirit. Oh, precious Lord. It rises up like a sweet-smelling savor. Sacrifices on the grill. What extends beyond the mechanics. Jesus. Jesus. Precious. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I loose this word into this assembly. The morning and the evening sacrifice, God. I loose this word and I bind it upon this house. In Jesus' name, send angels to chase us with us, to put it into our spirits. Let us understand this. Precious Lamb. I want to be clear tonight. And I want you to understand, every head bowed, every eye closed, 
I want to just make one last recap to make sure you understand. This is why some of you are struggling. You come to church, you go through the mechanics. Then you leave out of here and you go do your drama. It's because you're only drawing nigh to him with your lips, but the problem is your heart is far from him. Just so that I'm clear, the reason that the Lord said when you lay the sacrifice on the altar Yes, the external is important. But God said that's the mechanics. But what I want is make sure all the fat thereof, you see, because the fat was connected with the internal organs. He listed them in the law, the liver, the call, so forth. God said when you pull it out, I want the fat. Bring the fat. The fat is on the inside. All of that was a type and a metaphor for God saying when you present yourself to me, I don't want just an outward presentation. I want what's inside. And it's what's inside the heart. That's what makes it a sweet smell and savor. That's what makes it acceptable unto God. That's the thing that God wants. Just be still before him for a moment. Just let his presence flow over you like, like oil for just a moment. Let's worship him together right now. Jesus, we have decisions to make. It's amazing how many of God's people chase dead things. It's because... You only understand acts, but you don't understand his ways. That comes from going through the mechanics, but really having no knowledge of God, not on a personal level. People that tap into a relationship with God, they're not hard people. They're not rigid and flexible because they have learned that they not only know the book, but they know the spirit of the author of the book. And they're able to get answers through the complexities of life. 
because their God is not just a mechanical ritual, but it's a true living relationship. Hallelujah. One more time, would you just give him great praise throughout this auditorium? Oh, hallelujah. Jesus' name. I appreciate you being in the house of the Lord tonight. And if you're able to stay, we have some new people that are starting to come be a part of the church. And part of this fellowship time is for you to get to know some of these new folks and introduce yourself. If you're able to stay for a few minutes and have a meal together, Bless the Bible quiz team. Even if you're not able to stay very long, even if you have something to go, that's all fine. Thank you for fellowship and supporting them. I know that the next eight, nine days are going to be very, very strong, hectic, and harried with NIB and our banquet and programs. And as soon as that's over, it's just everything's shutting down but church for the holidays. So we'll catch up. But we have some ministry to do. And thank you for not just doing it with the mechanics, but do it with the heart. That's what brings the joy to all of this thing. Can you say amen? Why don't we fire up some bacon for God before? <laughs> Draw him. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Love one another. Greet one another. Thank you for being faithful to God.